Welcome back, friends. It's time for our final matchup of this second playday of APAC North Stage 2. Damon Kia versus Fab Gaming about to begin. Korea versus Japan, as always, as APAC North is pretty much Korea and Japan at this point in time. We'll come back to the analyst desk. I'm the medic. This is Jack and Fabian. Jack said something bad about Sweden. Fabian is kind of <laughs> hurt now, but you know Turn what? Me a little punch. We're going to put that in. pain on the side for our final day and a final matchup of this day. Starting off with Damon Kia, a team, Fabian, that we expected to be at the Charlotte Major, but we're not there. They come in, they beat Fnatic in day one, and we just expect them to roll through the stage. They're gonna roll through the stage. I think that they're one of the teams, I'm not gonna say I think, I know they're gonna be one of the top two teams this stage, and I think that there's not gonna be any difference with this game either. I think they're gonna roll over Fav. They just have everything that they need to have the perfect team. They have the star player in Yas. They have the entire team being after him, being comp like super talented mechanically. They also have this way of always finding a way to get through things. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand where that comes from, really. I think it's both individual mechanical skill, but also the decision making that each player possesses that gives them the ability to just brute force stuff mm -hmm. when they're not finding an opening strategically. But most of the time they do find that opening strategically, so they have like a perfect toolbox. There's just a team full of star players though. And that's simply what it is. Each player at some point in time over the past year has had their moments, not moments, sustained period of greatness individually. You know, you talk about Yas before that, it was Rin, SI, it was Woogie Man. It's, it, they're just such a good, complete team. And I think this change to top two going to the major will only help them. They won't have to go through the playoffs anymore, obviously, and just straight to the major. We expect them to be one of the top two teams, and I would probably do a couple of forfeits if they weren't. I mean, we sit here and argue about which top two teams. It's more like which team is going to be number two, I think, when we talk about the other seven. Yeah, yeah. I think they're, they're very... And actually, ahead. one of the teams that are competing for those top spots is Fav Gaming on the other side, Jack. So can they do it today? They can. There's no reason why Fav can't win in any given match day. They get themselves into these advantageous situations in rounds, in games, where they might be 5-2 up in a round and lose it. They might be 6-3 up in a game and lose it. And they've just got this kind of late round, late game composure issue. If they get over that, they're, they're actually a very dangerous team. Afro number two, it looks like they're finally back. I've been talking about this pairing for so long. They had a good game last week. And if they can get themselves back up because they had very quiet at stage one, alongside Taipon and Ramu as well, it, it can be quite good. I don't know why Shin's only maining Warden and not an attacker. Playing that in attack too. He's just yeah. playing, playing attack as well, just Warden all the way through. I mean, they're a dangerous team. But they do have this issue of throwing, and yeah, if you have that sort of mustache as, uh, as Warden, you don't need to play any other operators. It's, it's the manliest thing you can have. But uh, yeah, the entire team of Fab, they have this ability, as you say, to be a very dangerous team, but they never seem to materialize on it and build something from it. Because when they are in the round advantages and they are actually in the lead, they play Solid Siege. But when they go in number disadvantage when it comes to, I'm not talking about in the rounds, but when they're two, four down, they seem to always try to make hero plays mm -hmm. that never really pays off. And it's mm -hmm. usually in really advantaged positions that they're, I need to get a kill back. They push out, they get themselves killed, give away key area, and then they give away the round because of that. If they had just sat still and calmed down when they're in advantage, I think they could do a lot better. But let's just see what they do today. I think they're in against an opponent that can do a little bit too much to them. Well, let's see which map we're going to be playing on then in this series. Our 9 map pool limits itself to one in our best of one series. And Demon Kia will be banning Chalet to leave us with a border. That is their selection. They'll be starting off on the fence as it seems like Fav have picked the attack on border, Jack. Thoughts? You'd want to attack border first if you were playing it. It's a very attack-sided map. I think pound for pound, down one Kia, if you put down, five down one Kia players against five Fav players just in a straight shootout, down one Kia wins it. And I think that's what a lot of border comes down to, if I'm brutally honest. Mm -hmm. Fav can have opportunities. You know, it's not a map that's strategically heavy. It's, it's a map where you do need to make plays. So those kind of issues of just, you know, giving up the ground, not making plays, they kind of go out the window a little bit. I believe that border, if we start using Asami in the right way, if Asami is open, that is. That's true. It's might actually change over to be kind of a 50-50 map because there's a lot of places where you can use those barriers to make a defensive position that you usually can't play in mm -hmm. actually playable. And I also think that Castle is one of those operators that if teams need 
learn how to use it, it is one of those maps where it's actually absurdly strong. In Break Room especially, it's a castle barricade in the double door that you can use. And it's honestly, it gives you a super strong position. I was just about to reference a lineup of Castle, Azami, Aruni, Jaeger, Wamai. Yep. It would be so hard to break down on border. If teams start running something like that, could flip to bid and defend decided. Well, let's see who can take this. So Damon Kia enter in with a massive advantage, as you boys were saying, but Fav, they might have a few aces up their sleeves. Uh, we'll see. Thank you very much. Let's toss it to our casters. Happen M. Take us through it. Not sure if we're going to see a few aces, Milos, but there definitely might be one coming He was here up. earlier, but he's left now. Yeah, he wanted to take my job, but I kicked him out <laughs> back towards the analyst desk in the host spot that he's in currently. I was going to do it for something else, but I made a joke about the aces. But Yeah. Well, now I want to get a little cut out of ace and have them up my okay, sleeve. No, I didn't As you threaten the work of Sorry, sorry. Gosh. sorry. I, I lovely, lovefully pushed him back towards his... Beloved spot. Luffily. Luffily. He luffily did it. <laughs> yeah. Either way, <laughs> to border we go. I will just cut this off. <laughs> it's nice when you fight me, Losh, because um, usually it's the rest of us that do it, and we're much quicker with it, and you're like trying to warm up into it without hurting me, Losh's feelings. Because you still call him luffily. Love fully. Pushed back. Lovely. With, lo with a lot of love. Full of love. Yes. Yeah. Small. Push. Full of love. No finger. No love there. No finger there. No love lost on the finger side. Border. Break it down for me. It's a map that has been in uh, the map pool for, uh, well, not not for a while now, but before it was removed, it has been in for quite a while. Yeah. Um, there has been some changes to the map. Uh, nothing too major, however. I think the biggest change that I can come up with is either the bathroom and teller's area, which suddenly became a lot more viable as the bathroom has been extended outwards. Indeed. Extra exterior stairs have been added and the armory has slightly changed, which gives you an opportunity as a zombie gets bad, so we don't get to see Fabian's wishes. Um, it gives an opportunity to not be prone to the repel window, the sandwich window repel uh, that we sometimes see. There is also the change inside the big seating area where you now have that little extra walkway around the side towards break. Yes, it do. gives you a little bit more width, a little bit more swing. Border is aggressive. Border is sort of fitting that void that Coastline disappeared with when they were swapped out into each other's places in the map pool. And we haven't seen a huge amount of it, obviously, back in the day. Border lived up to its name, the boar bit, because we saw it all the time. It, alongside Oregon, were two of the big staples that we just kept on and kept on and kept on seeing, and then they were both sort of shelved for a bit, understandably, make some space, test out the other maps, and then bring it back. And we haven't seen a huge swing into it because, well, it's still quite aggressive. It's still quite thin. It's still, you know, it doesn't quite have the same stretch capabilities that the current meta plays itself really well when where you can sort of... You have to, if you want to play a stretch, see a lot of this map. Definitely so. Um, and, and the map, you know, whilst it has changed quite little, a lot of new operators have been added. And, and I think that's the biggest change in the likes. That suddenly a lot that worked back in the day just simply doesn't work now anymore because there's just many different opportunities to start dealing with it. Uh, Amira is often an operator we did see on this map, especially on uh, the top floor sites. Um, but that's actually starting to disappear a little bit as well. People not bringing Mira that many times anymore. Of course, currently uh, unplayable. Oh, Sens, hey, yeah, the Sens one seed. As you can see, a bit of a hefty pace as they make their way towards the game itself. They're going to see if they can, I guess, try and roll some of that gadget because what well, we actually saw earlier today in one of the earlier games on Villa, one of my favorite executes so far with the Sens combined with the Candelas of Ying before. It wasn't ultimately successful, but it got the kit down. I love seeing what people do with it. It's good to see um, teams trying to figure out how sense works and what they can achieve with the operator, uh, because of course hasn't uh, been in quarantine, whereas Azami has been, uh, and uh, you know teams had the opportunity to try it out uh, a lot during the scrims. That time is a little bit more limited with sense, so you see it being tested on the field a little bit more here and there, and as Shin is trying to sneak up up on these back stairs here, but also keeps uh, his eyes up on towards the teller's area. 
Seems like Ramu might actually be going for a bit of a need onto the half off. That should be a kill, but no, Rin manages to survive, takes little damage. It's a bit of an awkward angle to try and get yourself that sharp. They're tucked around the corner. There's already some damage done towards it, but Fav, they're sort of flying a flag instantly of pressure. They're trying to put down the markers and sort of say, well, this is where we're going to approach from, this is where we're going to approach from, and this is what we're going to make uncomfortable. You want to get clarity above. You have to do a bit of an armory clear here if you want to go for the Vance plant, and yes. As the first of the game, Taipon is off the board. Retake CC just slips past and fires a bit too high, but you can see three players stacked outside there. They have the chance of pulling away via break, but without an impact, they're not going to be able to get that hatch without a bit of support. The sense has rolled all the way down to the cover of the door. Yas has been able to find his slip round. He has the rotation round on the fountain. That's supposed to go through. That second one does. And now he's found a bit of safety. There's the pop. There's an easy take. They did not know he had got through the net. And he goes for one more and he finds it. Down one Kier open with a triple from Yas there. There's Kat saying to get one more for the road. And here, Fav barely able to get into the building. A flawless round to start it off. Wonderful from Dam One Kia here. They uh, took some small amount of damage early on from the grenade on Rin, but after that, Yas just being able to sneak around on the CCTV area gets one, just not caught off, but got himself in a bit of a tricky situation there as he tried to sneak back out. And then just a lack of information for Fav. Um, not being aware of where he is, he picks up two more kills, and uh, you know, it's only a matter of time until Dam One Kia is going to be able to win that round as a result. Now we're headed up towards the top floor, though. It is the site that we saw most back in the day when Border was around the first time. The first rotation through the maps. Something to get played a little bit less now. Um, partially due to Workshop being quite good as well, but especially the bathroom tellers starting to gain some traction as well. Good shots from him. He was, I mean, he was the MVP of Play Day 1. I mean, he's such an incredible player overall. It's like he's always performing. It's like well, rarely he doesn't. Well, yeah. Recent majors since hasn't been the best for Yas. And obviously, you look That's at the roster, true. and it's a very good roster. Now, Yas in Sweden major was fantastic. It was defining. It was the defining moment for the DK modern roster. I think it sort of threw them into the eyes of the global scene. And Yas was a big part of that. He had all the excitement that is thrown around to some of the best adventurous players ever. It carried on for a bit. It sort of dipped towards the start of this year, the first split, and um, obviously no showing as yep. um, Charlotte, and then that sort of build up. We didn't quite have that full Yas effect. Him hitting the boards running is very important. I think for Damon Kia to re-sort of surmount themselves as the top dogs of the league. Especially since there is no playoffs currently. They uh, they unfortunately lost out in the playoffs up against Apex South, where um, the majority of the spots did eventually go towards the southern side of Apex. Now, they don't have to worry about that anymore. All they need is a top two finish. It's happened quite close here, actually, to taking a gunfight. Of course, the other player is right behind in the sandwich, but the drones should be able to provide some spotting soon uh, towards the set position. And as the wall gets opened up even further, there's definitely going to be a telltale sign of what's to come. Now, one of the things that we saw before was a bit of a lack of intel on where the players got to. Obviously, a tight rotation netted Yas at least one definite extra kill, maybe two there on the spray through onto the fountain. And it was a bit of a tricky moment because, as we said, this is a very aggressive map. Border is a fast-moving map, but it's kind of thin at points and places. You have to be in a position to capitalize on the intel that you've got when you've got it. Fav, they're doing a lot of the same setup as before. They're getting themselves some clarity of the space. They've opened a bit of width here. The Aruni gate to stop the true progression down long towards 90. It's going to buy them a bit more time here. And it means they're not just going to be able to get at any player on the corner. They have, obviously, the alibi as the spray through. So it's also going to get them caught. And I'm not sure if there's a shield there as well tucked on the corner there. Often sometimes is, but it doesn't seem like it's set up. It's Yas, though, that's in another aggressive position on sec. Needs to be very careful, though, of not someone just pushing through in the balcony or up on that window. And as some openings are starting to be made, he's well aware. Now let's jump in. That's another free kill for Yaz, a second entry. But here is someone up on a rappel as well. No, some pressure is coming in from the break room side, so he needs to make a decision now of where he needs to strike. Well, Afro going down nine. He's able to get one. Takes Cat saying there's a spray through. Doesn't quite know which target to aim for. And the middle nets nothing. There it is. Afro with a cheeky double gets himself dug in. Woogie Man just slips back into the side. 
Viper takes a huge amount of damage here. Fav, they've netted a kill, but they have 30 seconds to see if they can try and net the remaining three, or at least get that kit down towards the site itself. Stacked up against Coded on the smoke. There is some pressure coming through on the opposite side. They have the one extra man, and they're going to try and utilize it to draw one of the players away. There it is, though. Swung all the way around. Wins the gunfight. Ramu, a huge and important take. Nobody to instantly stop this kit going down. Shin tries the long arm C4. Caught off. And, well, it's Rin now off the board as well. Woogie Man is all that's there. Ramu catches him off, and Fav take it over. Not going to be able to uh, to get the plan down, unfortunately, in the end there, but the round win is way more important for them. So, well played by them. Good usage of that smoke, as someone was indeed present near, uh, present near that small cubby, near the small side office. Um, often someone either on the desk or waiting prone to fire at your feet as you walk by. So using that smoke to get rid of their line of sight really allowed them to push through quickly, make sure that the player up close was taken care of, and after that you can go for a plant. So well played by Fav. Uh, good take onto CCTV as well. Yes, of course, able to find that entry. I'm not sure what the jump in was for. Again, that was a bit questionable, but they at least recovered themselves from it. Again, it was that moment where it looked like wrong intel. It looked like they had an idea on something but it was slightly askew. And then they threw themselves in for a jump in and they suffered the price of it. Yeah. But the important thing there, as I sort of highlighted in the first round, was they acted upon intel that they did have. The take that came instantly afterwards towards the fight onto 90. The call that well, we at least know where this player is. Let's put the pressure onto there. They picked up a double from somebody trying to get the revenge swing, which was the pressure they could then apply onto Yas. But it was that response that Border needs and respect is pace. There's you know, a window of how long you have information that's hot for. Mm -hmm. And on border, that is like cut in half. That time is very, very narrow. The thing about that top four side is as well, as soon as you lose control over CC and cash, they can just cut the side in the middle, right? It's, it's impossible to rotate through because they will have that 90, they can open up the wall, and suddenly, if you're on that side, you need to defend it with your life because you're the only hope your team will got. Quick opening, I believe that was in the east stairs there, would have gone six. Ramu now putting up some pressure onto the break room door as well. Needs to be careful to not actually get swung by Rin. Because Rin is also, uh, you know, looking to bring back a little bit of the fire that we've been seeing missing. Ramu, gonna go for the stretch round onto the armory side. They're trying to pinch the player out above, but it again means you've got to try and get a balance of where everybody is. Rin has the support of some of the structure. The mute jammers and the catch and the grenade is gonna buy them some extra time. They're just sort of hoping they can catch a loose firefight here, but otherwise it's still a drone game. The push comes through against Yas up top on armory. They're going deeper and deeper. Fav, two of them going for the single take. There is Woogie Man as a back line who's starting to heftily hit with that big rifle, but no true catch, and it allows Yas a bit of space to try and pull themselves back. Instantly, Fav move into the space behind them. They know they've got some territory, and they've got to make sure that they keep it. That's the important part, and the pressure will come down onto Rin themselves inside break. Pre-firing, but it's Woogie Man that gets locked out above the hatch. They keep pushing. Ramu gets revealed, and now they're above the site itself. A very quick swan song over the top floor. It's problematic that you've lost that area of the top floor so quickly, and Rin now being up top here as well might be hunted down in just a matter a second so the right call to drop down and head back towards the site the big issue though is they have that verticality they can start working it they can start improving on it as well uh, so they need to retake some ground or at least waste some time and i believe that's exactly what rin wants to do that's it rin's now in a position up here just behind that reverse shield the pressure's coming onto the site they're inside and they're gonna go for the plant just touch ground on the other side of the bathroom they're entirely taking over here the hatch I mean, it was a risky play to go down, but they read that there was no one there. Coat and Rin find one apiece. Rin over the top potentially could be a huge retake as Yas is eyeing it up as well. No, they set themselves back around onto the stairs. They're being watched, though, on the steady approach. There's the Flores drones, which keep rolling in from outside the window. I think they're just leaving those and letting them lie on the kit itself and making sure that nobody can try and get their hands to it. You can see Shin is driving, opening up the angles. Less than 20 seconds left. Number two takes one, gets revenged by Coed. He's over the top. Rin Swings around for the first fight. Can't quite find it. It's Afro that locks it in. Shin with the cover from the window. And Fav find their second on what seemed like an empty site. I'm not quite sure there. I mean, they did take control of that hatch. You suddenly do have a lot of the bathroom under control as a result of it. And you know what? They droned it. Fair play to them. They decided, you know what? We can go for the drop. There's no one in there. We can go for a plant. We can hold it vertically. 
and make sure we take the win afterwards. So well played by Fav there. Will Red into the defenses of Damwon Kia, who now heading back towards Armory Lockers. We're not going back towards the workshop that was won before. Instead, think they can change the pace here, change the momentum back into their own favor. I mean, to be fair, it was a very well put together bit of aggression there. It's Fav seeing opportunity and taking it. It's that yes. lesson that you harp on however many times is sometimes you just got to act. Sometimes you got to try and play into the space, see what opportunity is in front of the players, and then go for it. And they did. They, they did expertly. They cut themselves in, got the kit in that position in a post plant, especially one that seemed to take Damwon Kier a little bit by surprise. I think they expected a bit more back and forth before it came through. They then quickly had to go for the retake over the top. It was semi-successful and that they wanted out, but then eventually lost. You know, and it's just because Fav put them in a high pressure environment without too much time to get a true re reading on everything. The monster being brought out now by Taipon might actually slow down the attack just slightly, but remember of what I just said, as soon as you lose CCTV and break, the site is basically, well, not lost yet. You can still win your gunfights there, but reinforcing the site is becoming a lot more difficult because there is going to be that tall angle which they can hold and cut you off from if they do decide to try something. So with that Monty, it's very easy to actually push people out of planes, especially if they're playing alone with little to no reinforcements on their name. Now at this point with Damwon Kier, you can see they're trying to piece together just where things are going wrong. But this was a site where Yas's hold was a big drive and whether Fav are going to utilize the Monty to cut that game in half. They're eyeing it up as a bit of a blunt force tactic here. The spray comes through against Rin. They're holding on to these stairs, been off very long. There it was and you saw it either side of the top of these stairs and Shin underneath. Fav just made sure that they had every single route out wrapped in. They're not going to fall for the same mistakes they did in that early round against. Yes, now the Monty, top of the stairs, is able to get a bit of intel. Coated is going for a pretty daring rotate round just to make sure they have a crossfire on that Monty so he can't have a clean entrance into office. Sound will definitely be heard, though. As, uh, they should be aware of the fact that someone is inside the sandwich area there. Our secret terrors are coming in, potentially to open up bigger rotates, at least allow the Monty to just walk in, having to uh, unextend that shield. That is, of course, going to be very detrimental if that's going to be the case. Smoke canister popped. Two left in the pockets of uh, Coated here. There is also some Zofia concussions and impacts being shot, so the pressure is definitely going to be on. He's trying to go for a bit of a push there, but it's the Monty that's currently inside. He needs to worry because there's a second player, and he's coming around the corner with a shotgun. He gets that killed, but Monty still lives, though. The impact over the top. He's doing everything he needs to. The smoke canister is going to make this very awkward, but he took a gamble, and it did not pay off. Afro gets an important take, but there goes the Monty. Woogie Man finishes them off. It was the bravery of the smoke that bought them the time, but it's Shin that's fighting their way back in. It's a two versus two. And now they have themselves a bit of an angle. They've got the sight lines down towards the site. They're locked in onto Armory. There's a separation here from the guns of Fav. They have obviously some clarity. They've forced the back line, but at this point you have to work out how you can try and break your way into putting the objective down. And well, without Damwon Kia giving any territory away, it makes it awkward because you're either gonna have to try and force a fight a bit earlier or go for a two versus one and hope the kit stays well down. And that's not easy in a site like this where it's generally just a long rectangle across the board with a lot of sight lines already set up. Here, Shin, they're probably gonna open up the soft on close or maybe the mirror, uh, the maestro. No, it's the soft they're gonna get. They have a breach. They only have 10 seconds. They know where the push is coming from. The flash has come through. Line down. They get the second blind off. They're going for it. They dig in. One versus one. No time left. The ping's on the hot camera. And Kassan cleans it out. Well played there in the end, but it, it started to get really close there. They got so aggressive as soon as the Monty jumped in, just trying to take gunfights with every single person at the very same time. And even when the Monty died, still trying to aggress, over-aggress even, brought it back to a 2-2. Two and two. And at that moment, I was like, okay, you know the last two currently are instead of Armory? You have break room under control. You can hold the rotate. They cannot get back into the site. The issue, though, was how is... How is Thermite going to get into the site? Like, it had no safe way. The soft walls were opened up. We'll probably need to go for a breach. It could be that Mew Jammers will be blocking that from happening. And you don't really want to go for a window jumping at that situation, at that moment in time. So, Fav, you know, they still had a lot on the cards to win that round. When Damwon Kia went that over-aggressive in the end.
Fortunately for Danwon, they managed to hold on, though, and bring it back to a 2-2. Two -two. And uh, with that, we are headed towards round five. Back towards the bottom floor. I mean, it's back and forth, but it's scrappy. And as you said, with the play around the Monty, it was really the heroics of the smoke that was able to at least find one over the shoulder, do some damage, buy some time, and sort of forced a bit of awkward movement into the play of Fav, whether it was what was needed to get rid of the ability to get through on the breach or not. Either way, the Monty then being picked up, you know, if that smoke was in the same position where they were before, if they hadn't have been where they were yeah. and were still in Phantom, that wouldn't have happened. The Monty would have been able to keep themselves solid, maybe bait it out for utility, but most importantly, you assume they would have been able to tie that with the severe charges and get that office wall open towards the other plant. Here, you can see Dan and Kira still trying to piece together just how they can rebuff Fav because Fav keeps scratching. They make sure that they keep trying to find pressure and coming down to a one versus one in that situation is still, in a way, credit to Fav. Yes, uh, but they did have the opening kill. They could play it a little bit more patiently. I'm still confused where you would go for the jump in with the Monty in the end. Uh, it was just well played by the smoke, going for that daring rotate, you know, as mentioned before as well. But with that, next round is underway. Kota takes a lot of damage here through the soft wall, whilst making some rotations towards the workshop. Now, as we see that happen, the rest of Fav is trying to take control of that top floor. And that's kind of crucial, because there's a lot of verticality that is to be gained, which could have been lacking beforehand. So just the, the flawless round on the side of Damon Kia didn't really help them in their endeavors of getting close to the building. Well, they're trying to put the pressure onto CC. There is a player a little bit loose underneath of Woogie Man. He has some options with the shotgun, but obviously without anything else in terms of the C4, nothing else. The drive through, Office, they lose a player instantly. Yes, trying to rotate their way back round. They're going to swing round. They just missed the tail of a player. There's another one out on the balcony, caught on the drone, sprayed through the soft, and yes, torn apart. He dove deep to try and get a bite back out of Fav, but they had works going on around him. Another hot drone game, another hot kill. Woogie Man bites back, as I said, he has some options and he's able to at least make one of them work. You can see Coded is pretty injured. Rin is the only one trying to hold on to the vertical, at least for now. And with a minute on, they're gonna take the time to drop down. At least drop down into the server wreck. Might still be able to go for a bit of uh, contest there onto the actual CCTV if they do decide to move in. No, completely drop down now. So uh, no more being able to fire down on anybody walking into the armory. Shin is looking through these verticals that have been created, hoping to find any of the Demon Kia players just so they can turn back that advantage to two people again. It's just a little bit more safe for them. So, not going to fully breach that hatch with the single Selma on it. Just going to open the bit of the width that they have the option to. Obviously, they still have two exothermics in pocket as well. They just want to make things uncomfortable for the team they're up against here and force them into slightly different positions. Rin has found one of those. Rotated around on the side, but not for very long. Shin had the catch. There's the second. Shin lines him up. This third for the round. Looks for the fourth. Almost finds it. Goes in with a pistol. But Woogie Man is able to get some lockdown. Handful of seconds left. They're going for the stick, the smoke. Is it going to get the catch onto Afro? No is the answer. Definitely injured, but the plant is all that matter. Now they have a three versus one. Now Fav have their third round. The third round indeed, and they have the opportunity to go for four. Quite an interesting play there, going in with a pistol after that, not trying to slow it down a little bit, but it might have been a distraction move as they went in for the plant. So, you know, sometimes a bit of greed could actually uh, help out your team in the end of things. Two to three. The greater good. The greater good, indeed. There's that one, Kia. Trailing by around, headed back towards the bathroom. Tellers. And the last time we were around here, quick top floor control taken by the side of Fav, then completely abandoned the bathroom site, which led to a plant, which led to almost a complete shutdown of the remaining forces of Demon Kia, who couldn't win the round in the end. I still love the pace that Fav are applying to this. Yes, definitely. It, it, it's like... So far, it feels like Fav definitely had the better of Damon Kia in the map ban phase. It's just, it, it's relentless to a degree. They're making sure that every single time there's a bit of movement, they're at least moving around it. They're being uh, active. They're trying to close down the space between them and Damon Kia players as quickly as possible, or in the space of it, objective, as well as being sort of 
I'm not going to say hyper aggressive, but definitely actively aggressive towards potential gunfights as we're seeing the movements of especially Ramu and the play that he was making in the previous rounds. They're also looking towards the site at the same time. They're also looking towards how they can play that objective at the same time, being able to get the kit down a couple times across this, even when there's a lot of players still standing or ending in a firefight, shows a team that is fully tuned into the job at hand. More so controlled aggression that they're bringing. They know what they want to achieve with it. They just explode on these small parts of the map and manage to overwhelm them on Kia, at least so far. Shin outside the window of the tellers. Just hoping that he will find potentially someone who's still making rotates, doing some site preparation there and finds them an early entry. Because that makes your life a lot easier when you do decide to go for the execute at the end of these next two minutes. This five that needs to get some control. Again, verticality is going to be key. So that is what they're currently trying to work on. Bar Shin, who is still outside this window, and drones and information are going to be absolutely crucial. Fav, if they can try and find themselves on 4-2 here, I mean, it's still border, it's still finding its face, and with Castle on the board, obviously, no Azami is the conversation we had before, but it gives at least Defender something to work with. It could just be enough to force them over the edge and see what they can do with it here. They're going to once again lead in. Multiple guns going for this fight. Do they know the player tucked in round? Apparently not. Woogie Man gets in one, gets one down as well. And in amongst it, they're still under bouts of pressure. Finds the drone, a third player. Are they going to go for the pickup of the fight? It seems like they're angled over the top. Just misses out on the connection. But look at the other players coming up. You've got Yas coming up the main metal stairs. Taipan finds one. In the meantime, Yas gets Shin. It's a lockdown. It's only really... A couple of players around the chaos of this. Afro's trying to offer everything he can, but at this point, it's a very tough pickup to an impossible pickup. Number two is not going to get found via that route. Goes for a big rotate. Caught on the cam that wasn't actually active, so he's okay, but now it's dropped. They can assume the position. Wow, they're probably not going to get to him in time. Now it is just a four versus one. 50 seconds this time. It was locked down primarily by Woogie Man. He was a bit of an untested variable inside office. And he's kind of caused a big headache here for Fav. Ended it off as well. Got the opening and the closer in the end. It was actually funny to see how uh, Zofia, first one to get injured, actually one of the last to die there. Everybody trying to go for the recovery mission was being picked up. <laughs> <laughs> and Zofia being able to survive that uh, until the very end. And with that, we have an equal side. It's 3-3. Three three. We're headed towards the armory lockers now with Fav on the defense rather than down one Kia. So this is where the differences can be made. Who is going to be leading into this half? Who is going to be reaching that six mark first and have the opportunity to fight for a full three points? That's the big question. Uh, it's kind of tricky to gauge right now because I think both teams, they've had a fight. I think from a team dynamic, I've seen a bit more from Fav, but down on Kira never wants to be locked out. And it's also, it's a game of two halves. It's a game of yep. sort of bringing that balance on either side. And are we going to be able to see that same thing? If, you know, Fab, you've got to look at it. If I'm going to say it's a team effort, it's hot drones active ahead of gunners that are pulling things together. You don't have that so obviously or so actively in terms of your defense, unless you're really playing an echo and trying a game. It's a lot of intel, sure, that you can pass off to them, but it's less hunting, more kind of avoiding and hiding. And that's something that Damon Kira are very good at shutting down. That's it, right on the defense. It is often trying to get around things and provide a bit of support when a gunfight is going through. Um, also on the attack, it's prematurely to, uh, to get all those kills. Either way, we're getting into it. And Damon Kia, of course, maybe one of the most experienced teams, especially internationally, currently in APAC North. They want to get back to those majors. They need a top two spot. And if you look to the right top side of your screen, you see that they're currently in fourth place on those live rankings. So they desperately need a win oh, to get up there. And that is an RC Retour that just managed to escape its death and opens up that shield, which brings a bit of opportunity to cut down the top four and a half. Yeah, the little drone that could. And I guess, if anything, it shows you how thin this map can be. Rolled all the way from a bit of distance out side, inside, up a set of stairs towards the core of the hold around that side of the site. It's just what border is. It's very quick trips 
towards the danger zone. And here, they're going to see if they can try and apply the pressure. Gridlock, not the most common to be seen, but a control of space is very important on this map. And with Nomad off the board, you've got to have something to stop and cut rotates in. There is the Goyo. The Hot Pockets to try and just, I guess, slow down the pace that might swing around. It's a long burn. In 20 seconds, it only gets longer the closer you get to the end. I think the gridlock is actually, um, you know, yes, it's more obvious, but there's more just jumping down as Yas is in and gets the entry kill, finds Afro, and instantly wants to continue to cut down that metal stairs or to rotate back towards the armory side. Well, he now has his route through. He's going to put some pressure onto 90 as well and get himself a little bit of wiggle room and whipped down to the swing and hope he can find something with a bit more range. They're not overstating Fav as of yet. Shin stepped in, but Woogie Man has stepped up too. Takes care of Ramu on the far side. And now it's down to the pressure onto Office. They have a bit of a crossfire here. Taipon's offering some support round, but they know that Yas is loose. And if Yas goes for an aggressive swing here onto 90, he'll be right behind it. The pressure is coming through now towards the site. The wall gets popped open. Just the impact doesn't play off. Uh, well, that's Typon going for something hyper aggressive, but they've popped off for the roam. Yes, Yas on the swing. I assume he took that around 90 around the backside of the player there on Fountain. And there's one more. It is just that last remaining stent, but they are ripped out. And down on Kia find their first attack. Second flawless round. The first one was on their first defensive round. This one on the first attacking round. So it definitely seemed to be starting strong. Now the big ask of them is to continue that strength, continue the momentum that they have been able to build up. And let's see if they can uh, carry that on towards the bathroom teller's take as well. Now, I'm going back to Gridlock because it seems like Woogie Man is again bringing her. Um, I wasn't quite done with my point yet, but then Yas rudely interrupted me with getting the entry kill. He did. Yeah, he does that. He does that quite a lot. Um, but Gridlock is, is actually, if you look at the gadget and the guns, pretty good operator. I mean, you get three track stingers, which cover more ground than an air jab would. And yes, as I said before, it is more obvious than the air jab. The air jab you can hide in like a plant pot or something like that, and it will still catch you. But it takes a lot more time to get rid of the track stingers if they fully deploy. You also carry the LMG, um, which... I've heard that pretty good. I've heard they're in this current meta yeah, pretty really good, good and prevalent. The Ooh. only true downside uh, to Gridlock is that she's a three, uh, one speed. So if she would be to speed up by just one, if it becomes a, if she becomes a two speed, suddenly I think we sh we would see a lot of Gridlock coming up. I, I think Gridlock as an operator is a drive towards a role of the gadget, which is a strange thing to say in a gadget-based game, but. If you're bringing a gridlock, you know exactly generally where you want to roll those track stingers. Other ops are sometimes a bit more malleable, I think, in terms of how they can throw their gadgetry, which is why you don't see her as often. Obviously, one speed as well in this meta is you feel one speed. It's all the things that have been said about Sens, all the things that have been said about gridlock. You feel a slower operator in this meta. You definitely do have for almost losing uh, his life there. Just barely escaping, headed back up these metal stairs to find a bit of safety up on that top floor. Ram we're now debating as well to whether or not stay here because essentially the only one that's carrying the, uh, or basically covering the first floor flank towards the objective. They have themselves angled in with a similar approach as before, but they don't have that early strike against the player. Shin, however, is under a lot of pressure. They have somebody on AC. They have themselves spread out here for the stretch and the grab, and there it is. Afro finds one. Ramu finds one back. Headed up the stairs, and they're going to rotate off, but it's an Oryx. They can always find a new place to hop up and cause some other dramas and problems. Katsang with the control here over 90 as Rin is the next to find the fight, finds the Oryx, and Typon finds Rin. It's trade for trade underneath. They're at least able to keep fighting back, which they couldn't before. Coated. Oh, they just get the final catch there onto Typon. They almost suffered on the other end of that. And now it just leaves these two players stuck above the site. It's a slow creep towards where they're at. They have an idea here, and Coated's going to make a bit of noise on the swing round. There's the player on side fountain, fires a bit too high. They don't truly know where that player is. They're tucked in. Shin in a hyper-dangerous spot hits the first, and, well, they weren't paying enough attention. The track stingers, they're able to pop their way around. The players survive a minute 10, and instead, DK's going to focus on the site. They realize it's cold, so they're going to make it a little bit hot and dangerous. The smoke canisters block off the sight lines. A double rotate round towards the site, and suddenly it's a post plant, and suddenly it's just number two left. Coated finds his third for the round and finds himself looking down the barrel of a smoky gun, so instead pops out, but not for very long. Damon Kia 
find two for a row. Surprised they didn't actually go for the side earlier, but well played they did it in the end anyway. Because, you know, there was still two players up top. Of course, could be an information issue there. Them not really realizing both are there. But as soon as they did find out, all right, there is one still in armory. There is one in archives as well, because we heard that one before. We can go for the plant. It is safe. We just start dropping. We start heading towards that area and they will find it. And as a result, we have attack timeout being called by the side of Fav. This one was a bit more back and forth, but still, they lost the side because most of the fight was taken on top floor. I think that's something that we're seeing here is, you know, for all the compliments that I paid Fav on their attack, it's the same for Damon Kier. We said they were very good at taking and isolating fights, and that's yeah. entirely what they're doing here is it's almost that moment where the Batman villain goons just get plucked out of the shadows by the man himself, and they're sort of looking around like, where is this coming from? Because it's coming from multiple different sides. You look at how Damon Key is setting up, that approach there onto Fountain, they had the player on AC ready, they had the pressure coming over from Office, they had the fight coming around from CC as well, and then they also had the fight coming around from the bottom of Metal Stairs. They were in every single route in and out of that building, and sure, an engagement happened around CC, and then an engagement happened around Metal Stairs, but because they had the positioning there, it wasn't the defenders taking advantage of them. It was them set up for an engagement there just as much as they were set up ready for the one in office if it played out. All I took away from that is there's five Batmans. A lot of Batmans. Five Batmans that are uh, picking up <laughs> the five players. from So show. many Batmans. But yeah, um, Damon Kia able to find and like target these players individually rather than needing to approach them. Uh, as a group, as the trades there are there. And yes, of course, trades do still happen, but eventually you're in out of manpower and uh, you're going to have to take these 1v1s or 1vxs, which is exactly what happened in that last round as soon as the diffuser went down. A 5 3 and a team kill comes through. Oh no! With this, okay, listen up. In, in, ty in Typhon's defense, the ITA 12S is not supposed to kill people, it, it's absolute garbage. In his defense, he had also <laughs> already shot a hole in, and then the Valkyrie ran in front yeah, of him. Yeah, so it's like... He had started the process of that rotation. It wasn't yeah. as if it was the first shot that killed number two. It was the second shot for that rotation. That is entirely the Valkyrie's fault. Any Valk mains out there trying but, to be like they should have been paying attention? As a Valk main myself, no. Maybe number two was thinking as well. It's like the ita 12 s All it does is like 10 damage. Yeah, I can I'll take the that. 12 damage. Yes, spotted here, opening up some uh, some extra holes on the frost type on. Yes, might be going on a bit of an adventure there soon, seeing if he can actually go for the pickup. Shin also spotted now, but a second drone. So two players of the four remaining positions are currently known by Damon Kia. Well, it's not the best thing to happen after attack timeout, but if they can try and clutch this out, it'll give them a lot of energy. And, well, now they've only got the option to try and win a four versus five. I'm not even sure if the Valk was really able to loose their cameras before they were removed from the board. Here, more of the same pressure that comes through. Woogie Man, he played it cautious. He didn't want to hand them the freebie and kept himself crawling, but Ramu's holding the angle. Oh, oh, and once again, they know there it is. There's that game that they play so well, a five versus three now. You could see they had the ping a little bit higher, a little bit late around the side. You could see some bullet traces actually came through from elsewhere before the lockdown. Woogie Man, one more. And yet again, he's able to strike inside the heart of this game, 10 to 4. And I said he clutched out rounds before, but he's driving this one. There's Coed and Yas to lock it in. Is that another flawless round? I don't think they get the technical pop up because. The team kill, but. The team kill. Either way, I'm going to write it down as a flawless round because they didn't take any losses there. It's five kills again going their way. And again, I like the gridlock use. They just shut down parts of the map, and even if they lose a player there, there is no way that Fav could bring back the aggression. Not that they lost anybody, but it's there, and it it's kind of keeps them stuck in their positions. They can only peek that doorway, not swing the hallway, whilst you're focused on the player that's down in 90. So I, I kind of want to commend the use of the gridlock here. I'm pretty sure we continue seeing that for the remainder of this matchup. Whereas Damon Kia currently on to six versus only the three rounds of Fav. Is Fav going to be able to go for a comeback here? Because they started off so strong. They started off quite well. For the first four rounds, it looked like they were in control. And then Damon, you know, barred that first round where they had the flawless, were able to somehow bring it to a 3 3. 
but now just running away with it. It's just two flawless rounds. Of course, the team kill didn't help, but you cannot blame everything on that team kill there. It's just a single kill. Everybody still got picked up one by one. I think that's it. From what started as a back and forth to go into three straight rounds in a row and three convincing rounds in a row. And okay, the middle of the pack was a bit of a back and forth, but they still had a three versus two, and then they still had the map control. You know, you got to have a lot of map control to go, oh, well, let's stop trying to hunt these guys. Let's just go and plant. To do an entire rotate, because they were actively hunting that fight, and they suddenly, all three of them picked up and headed back to the kit. That is map control, and that is what Tam and Kia have absolutely flaunted in the face of this on the second half. Now, Fav, what can you do to try and stop it? Rin's going to be a bit of a drive in here onto the main door, see if they can try and catch out the player just around the corner. There's the drone, there's the reveal, and there's a retreat. Number two, they were out very early last time. They don't want to make the same mistake, but I guess, well, they would be at someone else's hand this time. Possibly, yeah. Now, these frost mats could actually be catching off some of the players if they do want to go for a ventilation plant here. It's a good drone there. They know exactly someone is inside the sandwich there. A grenade will surely be bounced in very quickly here to get rid of Shin, hoping that he has some nice magnets set up for himself here. Should be well aware of his position that has been uh, seen and spotted now as the drone came around the corner. So he's just going to try and hold it close. That's it. It's a well-known power position. It's a place where you can get caught by well-placed frag grenades. They're going to burn the disc. It's going to play just above. Swung around and sprayed through. Caught the first. Rin has the refrag coat. It has the cover onto Afro, who tried to swing around from the admin side itself. There it is, Ramu inside Fountain. He's trying to at least keep some of the piece in the control. The kit is left, and they're going to go for a rotate. A very well-coordinated strike there onto those single players. And now they're going to see if they can try and retake a little bit more of the top floor. No. A change of idea here, and this is something Damonkia do well. They're going to pick up sticks. Actually find Ramu round on the back. Whether that was just a push or the fight on AC, seemingly. That puts them in a four versus two for Fab to see if they can hold on to this game. Pretty sure there was a rotation that was being covered off there by uh, Rin because they knew someone was still around the fountain area. You don't want him to get back in, and as Typhon gets a good shot off, it is going to be a three on two. It's still possible for number two and Typhon to try and clutch this out, and as they're both uh, together here on the A bomb side, it's actually a plant that was about to be attempted right here, but it changed their mind as Coda just goes off, gets the kill instead, but now gets pushed, however. That's the diffuser down with 40 seconds left on the clock, and number two slipping into the bathroom. Well, he's able to take a big strike there. The man who was moved off by a team kill before before could be the reason the team stays in it at this point. You can see they have a ping and a rough idea on the player. The tracks thing is going to cover one side of the movement, pulls off the gun at the oh. worst time. But he has been excellent all game and all the way to the finish. Woogie Man is the man of the moment and Dan Wan Kier the team that takes the full three points. Bit of a lucky timing in the end there, but still the LMG back up in time to get that final kill. Hurt the glass break and finds the final frag. And they continue their tradition of winning against Fav. As they did so in the last three matches they played against them as well. And it, for a second here, it looked like we could be seeing a Fav upset over Damwon Kia. For a second, it was quite close. And we were like, if they can continue this, they might be able to go for it. But then they went into the defense and they couldn't win a single round anymore, unfortunately. As Damwon Kia literally had them locked off. It was the thing, if we were going to wonder the statistics of that map, Dan Monkey has sort of proved it. It is good for attackers, and they are good at attacking. We'll take a quick break before we're back with the desk.